This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and oh my God, I can hold two gaming laptops at once. And it's not just because I go to the gym, which I do go to the gym. It's because these are thin and light gaming laptops with a lot of power inside, and they compete with each other. This is the 15.6 inch MSI GS63 VR Go Stealth Pro, excuse me, it used to be called the Ghost Pro, now called the Stealth Pro. This is the Asus Rogue Strix GL502VS. Both of these have NVIDIA 10 series graphics. This is four pounds, this is five pounds, this is a little thinner, this is a little cooler. As you might imagine, the skinnier you get, the hotter you get. They're both very capable. They both run quad-core i7 CPUs. You can get them with 1080 or 4K displays, backlit keyboards, a lot that they have in common. So how do you decide between the two of them with only $100 setting them apart? The MSI is typically $100 more. I'm going to tell you now. And for those of you who say, oh my God, I don't watch anything over two minutes long. You want to know what I pick? I'm going to pick the Asus Rogue this time, even though I've been mostly an MSI gal. But if you want to know why, you really should keep watching the video. First, the similarities. I mean, there's a reason why you would be considering these two against each other, and that's because they do have a lot in common. The ASUS goes for $16.99 for our configuration, the DB71, pretty high-end config, and the MSI with the 1080p display goes for $17.99. They're both similar configuration, 256 gig SSD, a terabyte hard drive, 16 gigs of RAM, and, of course, a quad-core Skylake generation Core i7-6700 HQ, 2.6 gigahertz ter with turbo boost to 3.5 gigahertz. And worth noting that with the MSI, they usually have a lot of different submodels. So you might get a SATA 3 SSD instead of the faster PCIe NVMe SSD, which you do get for sure in the ASUS DB71 model that we have. Also, MSI gives you a 5400 RPM terabyte hard drive, whereas ASUS gives you a 7200 RPM. We're paying attention to these things MSI we notice. Both have two RAM slots, so 32 gigs of RAM is maximum if you use two 16 gig modules. The ASUS has one 16 gig module in place, so you just have to throw another one in there. Of course, that means you have a single channel RAM configuration outside or inside the box there. Whereas with MSI, they give you two 8 gig modules. So you get dual channel, a little bit faster performance there, a little bit, you know, a couple of percentage points, but you'll have to throw that RAM away if you want to do an upgrade. Both are available with 1080p or 4K displays, matte non-touch IPS for both of these brands. Gaming laptops typically have that kind of configuration. We'll talk about the display a little bit more in detail later. Both have backlit keyboards. That Steel Series RGB multicolor backlit keyboard on the MSI is pretty sweet. And the 15.6 inch is the sweet size for typing comfort. It's very nice to type on. I like it a lot. The ASUS is red backlit, which with, of course, those WASD keys that are orange. And it's also very nice to type on. But I think as a connoisseur of keyboards, the MSI is ahead by a little bit there. But both of them I really enjoy typing on. For MSI, the trackpad, the best we can say is it no longer makes me absolutely want to throw a mouse at the screen anymore. It's workable, but the cursor is still a little bit jumpy. Sometimes it doesn't notice tap to click. The ASUS has a really nice trackpad. It works well. It tracks well. So point there for the ASUS for the trackpad, point for MSI for the keyboard, though the keyboards are pretty close in. There you have it for the similarities. They're both, by the way, called thin and light gaming laptops, which is some people who buy Ultrabooks might giggle at, but gaming laptops are bigger and heavier because they have more internals. They literally have a dedicated GPU in there that Ultrabooks don't have. They have CPUs that require more cooling, and there you go. So as we talk about the differences, though they're both thin and light, the MSI is the thinner and lighter one. 3.96 pounds, let's just call it four pounds, 0.77 inches thick. That is pretty slim and pretty amazingly light for something with this much horsepower inside. The ASUS is no slouch, but it's five pounds or, you know, uh, 4.9 pounds, so rounding up there. And it's 1.2 inches thick, so it is thicker. It's not a super chunky beast like your average gaming laptop, but it's not as skinny. And there's a lot of appeal in having the thinnest, lightest ooh, laptop. And I know I fell for that too. And I had an MSI GS60 Ghost Pro for a year, and I loved it. But 
You know what? There's a downside to that, and it did get to me. The fans are louder on the skinnier laptop, in this case, the MSI, even though that's improved over the years for MSI. It's pretty loud. You're going to want headphones most likely when you're gaming. It also gets hot. Not as hot as back in the Ghost Pro days, but still, it's... You'll, you'll feel the difference in temperatures there. 129 degrees Fahrenheit is considerably above 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is human body temperature. It's too hot to put on your lap when you're gaming. The Asus keeps more of a chill. That thickness really helps and that extra room to move air inside. So 112 degrees was the hot spot on the bottom right corner. Uh, that's still, you know, especially because that corner doesn't tend to touch your leg. It, it, you can play games on your lap and it's not that bad. Though it's always more polite to not block the vents on the bottom of the laptop where it takes in air to cool things. Speaking of that, I use a, a chilling pad, which is really just kind of like a plastic lap stand that has corrugated poles. It's not an active one with a fan on it, but it still works really well to help laptops stay cooler. It made much more of a difference with the Asus, which got as quiet as a big old GT72 Dominator or Asus Rogue G752 when it was on that thing. The MSI, I think it's still the thermal constraints of that case that are causing it some problems, and it didn't cool down as much. So that's point number one, why personally I'm leaning towards the Asus. Thin and light's nice, but going beyond a certain point, the heat and the noise and the, always worrying about it, even though I never had a problem, my old Ghost Pro, I'm okay with a little thicker now. I've been there, done that with the, the thinnest I could possibly get. In terms of graphics performance, the MSI GS63 VR ships with NVIDIA GTX 1060M graphics, six gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM. That's pretty fast. That re that stands in for the 970 series. Previously, it got so much faster, they kind of changed the way the numbers hold their meaning in the NVIDIA lineup. But the ASUS, it has the GTX 1070M with 8 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM. That is like stepping up to the old 980 series, only obviously much better, but that's where it stands in the the lineup of cards that MSI makes. That's seriously powerful, and it's a very, very rare thing to see in a 15-inch laptop, especially one that's relatively speaking thin and light. And it does make a difference. You can see our gaming benchmark figures where you're going to gain some serious frames, both in 1080p and 4K gaming. That said, if you're mostly just going to stick with the built-in panel and you're going to buy the 1080p display. Uh, the 1060 is more than adequate for most current games to play on high, very high, or even ultra settings at 60 frames per second. So, it, you know, you're doing okay there. But if you want to play with an external 144 hertz monitor, if you want to do 4K gaming, if you're future looking, because you know how games every year just require more and more power, then the 1070 obviously is the more future looking and future proof product, as much as you can say that about any of these. And they don't have removable and replaceable dedicated graphics cards. So what you got is what you got. You got to live with it for a couple of years. And relating to the graphics card, there's which is more important to you, NVIDIA Optimus or NVIDIA G-Sync? Right now, NVIDIA can't do both in the same machine. The MSI Stealth Pro has Optimus, which means it can automatically switch between dedicated and integrated graphics to try to reduce heat and noise when you're doing productivity work where you don't need much horsepower. That said, the battery life really isn't much different from the Asus, which does not have Optimus. It's always running on dedicated graphics, but in return, you get G-Sync at 60 hertz. If I had to choose, given the fact that both of these are really rocking similar battery life, I would go with G-Sync because it really keeps gameplay smooth and you just don't see that ghosting and tearing that you might otherwise. E even if you can run a game at 80 frames per second, you can still cause visual artifacting if your panel only refreshes at 60 hertz. So there you have it. I would say I'd go with the G-Sync, but that is up to you too. Now, like I said, both of these are available with full HD or 4K displays. MSI has both out in the market now, though it's a little hard to find that 4K. We do have the MSI in the 4K panel in for review, and that's the one we have reviewed. With the ASUS, they don't have the 4K on the market yet. It's supposed to be coming. So we have the 1080p panel, and that's the one that we have tested. Typically, the 4K panel option is the even higher quality option, though sometimes it's not quite as bright because they use more power, so often they'll drive the brightness a little bit less. That said, brightness is pretty close on these. The MSI is 280 nits. The ASUS is 300 nits of brightness. So honestly, the ASUS experientially seems brighter to me. 
who knows why that is. They're both IPS panels. They're both using similar technology. And, but both are pretty darn bright. The color gamut on both of these is quite good. You've got almost full sRGB coverage and about 75%, a little bit less, of Adobe RGB. That's good enough for some pro photo work. So they're they're even there, too. But where MSI really fell down with, with the Stealth Pro 15-inch model is the contrast ratio being in the 300s. And on a matte panel particularly, because matte panels usually reduce the perception of contrast, where glossy panels increase contrast perception, that's just not good. And ASUS has about double that for contrast ratio, and it's noticeable. If you're doing photo and video editing, you'll notice it. If you're dungeon crawling, and this is a gaming laptop, so you know how many dark settings there are, you can see the difference in our footage here. I, when I'm in playing Far Cry Primal and I'm my, in my very own home cave, I can't see nothing just about. And with the ASUS, I can so, win for ASUS for having a better quality panel for gaming. Also, the ASUS manages a bit better in terms of the native white point. It's closer to that 6,600 degrees Kelvin that's considered perfection for those of you who are do, doing photo and video editing. It's 7,000 degrees on the MSI, which isn't by laptop standards that egregious, but it's that's something that's a little bit harder to color correct for than the, the gamma. We, and each of these skews a little bit off perfect for gamma, one in each direction, but... There you have it. Ports on these are very similar. Lots of USB 3.0 ports. Here's where MSI pulls ahead. They have a USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port. So for those of you who want to use the Razer Core, an external graphics amplifier that plugs into Thunderbolt 3, well, that's a way to give the laptop future life. Of course, the problem with the core is it's about 500 bucks, and then if you want to put like a nice desktop 1070 or 1080 in there, that's another 500, looking almost a thousand dollars. So, I've hesitated from getting too excited about the core solution, but it's there, and we'd like to see Thunderbolt 3. ASUS, for some reason, just goes with USB-C 3.1 Gen 2. So you'll get the fastest possible USB-C, but there's no Thunderbolt 3 support on this model. ASUS does pull ahead because they have HDMI 2.0 port, whereas MSI is still rocking the old 1.4 port. What's the difference? 1.4 can do a f drive a 4K monitor at only 30 hertz refresh rate, way too slow for gaming, even a little slow for watching movies, whereas the... 2.0 standard can drive a 4K monitor at 60 hertz, which is kind of standard, kind of nice, and good looking. That said, I think most people who are using a 4K display are probably using the mini display port, which both of these have anyway. So how important that feature is? Eh, I don't know. They both have Ethernet. They both have SD card slots. Otherwise, they're pretty much on par. Now, when it comes to upgradability, on first blush, they look the same. They both have two RAM slots. They both have an M2 SSD slot compatible with SATA 3 and PCIe NVMe SSDs. They have a two and a half inch drive bay. You can go with the stock spinning hard drive. You can put your own two and a half inch SSD if you want. They both have socketed wireless cards. Intel Wireless 8260 on the ASUS and Killer Wi-Fi on the MSI. But here's the thing, with, with ASUS, you take off the bottom cover and all of that stuff is there. The world's your oyster. You can have access to everything. MSI puts that nagging little warranty warning sticker over one of the screws, which they say it's okay to open it up as long as you don't bust anything while you're doing upgrades, but it still creeps you out a little. But once you open it up, you have access to the hard drive. You have access to the Wi-Fi card. You do not have access to the M2 SSD slot or the RAM slots unless you also unscrew the motherboard and disconnect the ribbon cables, which might be a little scary for some folks who are doing their own upgrades at home, but that's the design that MSI has been rocking for a while now with this line of laptops. Oh, hey, you're still here and I'm still holding these. Pretty impressive, right? So there you have it, the MSI versus the ASUS. It's the age-old fight. This is Pepsi, this is Coke. You get the idea. They've been battling in the gaming arena for some time, and they're both fine laptops. It really comes down to what's most important to you, the thinnest, lightest possible, at the expense of not having as much graphics power and quite as much cooling, or the one with the, wow, pretty impressive graphics for something in this size and weight that runs a bit cooler but is less sleek looking. There you have it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos.